Okay, so everybody ready to go? All right, you guys hear me in the back? How many people saw my speech this morning? All right, so this morning I did a couple of seconds of animation and then a whole thing of PowerPoint. In this one, I'm going to do exactly the opposite. I'm going to switch from PowerPoint to animation in about one minute. Okay, so basically the story is I am a computer forensics guy. That is my day job. I also run a data recovery shop. So we do a lot of data recovery, a lot of rebuilds. We run side by side, and basically some of the same people move back and forth between whatever we're doing. So one, one second I'm working on a data recovery, the other second I'm working on forensics, depending on what type of case. And some data recoveries are forensics. Sometimes we have to handle them, put them in a safe, lock them up, do what we need to do to actually uh, to protect chain of custody in a data recovery for a case that's ongoing that may not be my case. So at least from that realm, we're doing a lot of different types of stuff. And what kind of spurned me to do this particular speech, I've been working on this speech for almost two years. Uh, I started on it about a year and a half to two years ago because I ran into a solid state hard drive in the middle of a case. And it looks completely different when I was looking at the content. So I wanted to kind of show you and represent that to you. But at the same time, I did about a year's worth of research in solid state as to why it looks different and what's physically different about it. And when I mean solid state, I don't usually mean the little flash memory stick that you have in your pocket that you plug into your computer. And the reason I separate the two, even though they're solid state, is because there's fundamentally some differences in how they handle some of their content. So I'll show you that. But one of the first things I wanted to show you is this is just, uh, and you probably can't see this, so I'll zoom in in a second, but uh, some of you may realize that this is a FTK uh, Imager, basically a free program. You can actually just look at stuff. It was easy to do for this. And if you look, you'll see I bought a solid state hard drive, put it in a laptop, used it for a month, did some testing, and this is the result of what I keep running into, is that even after things have been deleted, just over normal usage, nothing astronomical, nothing happening to it, it looks like, to any forensics guy, it's been wiped. If you look, you've got zeros there. You go down the list of things that you would normally actually see remnants or things there in unallocated space and slack space, and it's deleted. So here's another one. This is in another directory, and so you'll see another directory with pictures where just through normal use, things start appearing to disappear. This is a separate one with a different type of file, and then again, it's zeroed out. There's nothing there. So I'm going through this process to try to show you the things that I found to be uh, different about a hard drive. And then from some of the people that I've actually talked to, I've gotten some proprietary information. And that proprietary information, my goal is not to actually show you any proprietary information itself. It is to use all the things that are different amongst all the vendors who are doing content to show you what is the same amongst all of the types of drives. So you can get a pretty good feel for it. So while I know some, that's not my point. So I'm not trying to like rip on SanDisk or anybody like that. So I'm going to try to show you what I at least have discovered <clears throat> to be the same for most of the content. So here we go. So my disclaimer here is the fact that for hard drives, we've basically had for 30, 40 years now, different manufacturers buying up each other until there's almost nothing left. There's only a handful of vendors now that we can reliably rely on to deliver hard drives. Others you know, come and go depending on what day of the week. But uh, for the most part, they've bought each other up and they all own some of the same property now or they've all come to some of the same conclusions. So hard drives, while they may have some fundamental things that are different vendor to vendor, there's a majority of things that are exactly the same, and that you could say the same thing whether it's a SATA drive, a two and a half inch drive, a three and a half inch hard drive, whatever. But at least from that standpoint, in doing data recoveries and my, in my 2,000 speeches I've already done in the last three or four years that are published online that you guys can already go and see because there's like 25 movies out there that go through data recovery step by step, even some trade secrets and things that you can actually do to take apart platters and move them to another drive. It's all out there. So you can go see all that. I'm going to use a minute or two of it at the end of this one. But uh, ultimately, it's all pretty much the same. You can do a couple of things different per vendor. But in solid state disks, that is not true. Solid state disks, they're all using some of the same components. But now we're talking about code that's actually running physically on a device for solid state. So they may be completely different. So whatever SanDisk is using may be different than somebody else at Toshiba or somebody else is using. Uh, some of them 
uh, get each other's IP property and actually license the code from them. So for instance, SanDisk owns something like 12% of the market and Samsung owns something like 40% of the market, but Samsung rents their IP property from SanDisk at least through maybe the end of this year or sometime you know, pretty close to renegotiating right now or something. So at least from that standpoint, you now have uh, a lot of vendors using some of the same code, some of the same processes may take place, but you get a lot of different things that are implied. So I just want to let you know that that's what my disclaimer is all about. So basically I want to talk about what a solid state disk is. So most people are just saying, okay, that flash disk, that memory stick is a solid state disk. And sure, it is a solid state disk, but kind of like routers and, and uh, gateway terms have become kind of reliant upon each other, that's what we're dealing with now with solid state. Typically now when you say solid state, you mean an actual physical device that when you plug it into your computer is not technically using a driver that it wasn't designed that wasn't designed for this particular thing. So in other words, it's using an IDE driver as opposed to a mass storage driver or something else that's been custom written. So it emulates what the other device was doing. And that's what I mean when I say solid state disk. So yes, I know that some, some systems have everything in them from accelerometers to keep this from happening, but I guarantee you it still happens. We still see drives like this in that uh, when they hit the ground or you know, whatever has, has happened to them, whether they hit with a hammer or something else, they physically are damaged. And uh, especially, obviously, three and a half inch disc where they may flip off the edge of the table. Because now people are making hard drives in these towers that look really cool, like a, a, you know, a free agent disc or a Mac store disc that stands on its end, and people all put it on the corner, and then they shake the table, and it goes <laughs> That's exactly what you're going to see here. It's pretty bad news most of the time, pretty unrepairable. It really depends on what type of problem you have. Uh, some of the newer drives, the actual whole spindle is just falling out of the entire assembly. So uh, it's getting pretty bad. But what if this was a solid state hard disk and your girlfriend threw your porn machine out the window? <clears throat> My time machine right here. So if that was a solid state disk, you'd still have a party going on on your chips. So they would be running just fine, they'd be happy, they'd be passing stuff, as long as that didn't crack. If, uh, if it didn't hit that corner and actually cause a crack across one of the boards or something, you may still have everything just fine. It'll be happy days, and when you put that back in your computer... <laughs> so, you have all you need. So I'm going to go over just a couple of fluffy reasons. This will be about three minutes of fluff of why you might want to get a solid state hard disk. Uh, so one of, the, one of the first things that I kind of want to point out is reliability. In this particular case, and I've described this in other speeches before, hard drives do not write zeros and ones to the platter. A lot of people think it does, but there is a preamp that is physically on the hard drive. It encodes a signal and inserts null space, and it really writes something that looks a lot more like a wave file to the, the platters themselves. So it's not a zero and one, it has to decode that content on its way back out. But physically on solid state, you actually are writing a zero or one. You're actually, uh, you're actually putting an electron in a cell and it's actually charging it and you're either getting a zero or one based on where that electron is or not. <clears throat> then you also have location independent speed because this is kind of ridiculous too. I see all these tests all the time that say, well, let's compare the solid state and you know, they're doing a, a read test or something that actually has to do something with the heads. Well, you have no heads and because of location independent stuff, there's, they're really not like comparing apples and oranges. So you're actually not doing justice to a solid state disk when you're doing a comparison like that. But, uh, but at least you have a difference in speed. <clears throat> then you have your difference in power consumption and before anybody goes riffing on me about Tom's hardware, uh, little thing about solid state hard drives sucking down more power or something, I, I'm not going to rip on them either. I don't know exactly what's going on, but in real world, in testing and doing these things, there is a difference. And uh, I am seeing a lot larger span of battery life by using solid state disks. And even just doing the math, some of what I've seen on Tom's hardware doesn't seem to make much sense. So I don't know all the details, but I would tell you from real world use, I get about an hour and a half, two hours longer battery life 
by having a solid state disk than I would if I had a spinning disk in the same laptop. 